This is Valley News Live at noon. And breaking news out of Bemidji, Minnesota. A teenager is arrested after police say he ran into a pedestrian and then tried to take off. It happened this morning around 4 along Paul Bunyan Drive. When authorities arrived on scene, they found an 18-year-old pedestrian on the ground and seriously hurt. Police then noticed a car driving away from that scene and they later pulled that driver over. 18-year-old Kyler Decent of North Home, Minnesota was then arrested. He's in jail for criminal vehicular operation. The victim is in the hospital and reportedly in stable condition. Authorities say alcohol played a role in that crash. A man accused of trying to strangle a woman and then threatening to shoot her in Roseau, Minnesota will be sentenced today. Court documents show deputies were sent to a Roseau home in January after a 911 call about a man with a loaded gun. The man in question is 42-year-old Nathan Brovold, and deputies ordered him out of the house. Brovold came out of that house and authorities found a gun in his waistband. At the time of the incident, Brovold was the Life Care Medical Center's chief nursing officer in Roseau. He has since been fired from that post. His sentencing is at one this afternoon. Stay with Valley News Live as we follow this story. Taking that live look outside right now at that Luther Family Ford Sky Cam. Uh, looks kind of cloudy out there here in South Fargo. Other parts dealing with that haze yet. Let's head on over to Summer Schnellbach for a check of what to expect in your Tuesday afternoon forecast. Good afternoon. We do have partly to mostly cloudy skies across the valley and unfortunately these uh, hazy skies have returned. Here's a tower cam time lapse from Grand Forks this morning. The sun is so obscured as it starts to rise can barely see it there on that time lapse, but vibrant reds and oranges as the sun came up. The latest air quality index in Fargo and Grand Forks are still both good in the green category, but Grand Forks pushing up near 50, which is the edge of that good to moderate uh, air quality conditions. Most of the valley is in green, but some of Lakes Country now in the moderate category and across the northern valley where we do have data. You can see little blips of yellow. So much of the northern valley and Devil's Lake is in the moderate category as well. Here's a line of clouds that are passing through. So if you're facing west from Fargo, you're likely to see a few of those clouds and can't rule out a few sprinkles within them as well. But the main story for today is going to be the heat before we start to see a cool down and some rain. So joining coming up in just a few minutes, I'll let you know how hot we're going to get today and when we could see some relief. All right, yeah, all looking for that relief summer. Thank you today. The East Grand Forks Public School Board is considering options for students heading back to school this fall. The board held a special meeting this morning where they heard from public health officials about case counts in the county. There is a proposed return to learn plan that says school will be five days a week in person with masks optional. The board also can implement new guidelines for social distancing, masking and in person learning depending on the current situation. A final decision on the plan is expected this coming Monday. If you see police swarming the Central Cass School tomorrow, no worries, it's all for a drill. Cass County deputies and other emergency crews will be conducting an active shooter training tomorrow from 6 to 10. The training will involve a large law enforcement presence. The Taliban has taken full control of Afghanistan's capital city of Kabul with armed checkpoints in the streets. Yet thousands of American citizens and Afghan allies remain in the country. Natalie Brand has more details from the White House. The U.S. military has sent more troops to the airport in Kabul to ensure the safety of Americans trying to flee Afghanistan. Throughout the night, nine C-17s arrived delivering equipment and approximately 1,000 troops. Additionally, seven C-17s departed. These flights lifted approximately 700 to 800 passengers. In a statement, a Taliban spokesperson claims foreign citizens in Kabul are not in danger. When it comes to the Taliban, uh, we are going to look for their actions uh, rather than listen to their words. President Biden forcefully defended his decision to withdraw from Afghanistan and says the U.S. military will remain just long enough to get Americans and our allies out of the country. Time is of the essence, and uh, we all we all share a, a sense of urgency here. But right now, 
The mission runs to 31st of August, and I won't begin to speculate what, what happens after that. Former National Security Advisor to President Trump, H.R. McMaster, argues some American forces should have stayed to support Afghan allies. They looked over their shoulders and said, who's got our back? And we said, not us. We're leaving. The concern now is for future threats and the safety of the American homeland. Most of Afghanistan is ungoverned space. Hmm. That type of terrain is, is a potential haven for terrorist organizations, Al-Qaeda and, and other groups. Lawmakers, including Democratic Senate Intelligence Committee Chairman Mark Warner, say they have questions for the administration about why the U.S. wasn't better prepared for a worst-case scenario. Natalie Brent, CBS News, the White House. A recent CBS News poll shows 72 percent of Americans supported the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. However, that poll was taken before the rapid collapse of Afghanistan to the Taliban. Hospitals are overwhelmed following two major natural disasters that hit Haiti over the past few days. Authorities say the death toll from the earthquake has risen to nearly 1,500 with over 6,000 people injured. Health facilities were overwhelmed with patients forced to wait for treatment in halls and on the porch. Doctors say they're running short of painkillers and steel pins to mend fractures. Casualties continued to stream into hospitals as tropical depression Grace battered the island yesterday. Around 30,000 families were left homeless after the quake with no choice but to remain on the street as that storm blew through. Now that tropical depression Fred moved north, people in Florida can now assess the damage left behind there. Panama City Beach Chief of Emergency Services said then tropical storm was strong, but it was largely a rain event. Fred dumped several inches of rain in the Florida panhandle, flooding neighborhood streets, leaving many of them impassable. Winds topped out at around 70 miles an hour, causing sporadic power outages. Fred has since been downgraded to a tropical depression, but the threats of flooding and tornadoes continue inland along the storm's path. Coming up at noon, staying home or heading out. More people are again canceling vacations as the Delta variant takes hold in the country. But next, Summer Schnellbach is in with what you need to know as we head further into your Tuesday afternoon.